I want to show you how you can do a Monte Carlo simulation in Excel to conduct capital budgeting. Um, a Monte Carlo simulation is a method for dealing with uncertainty. So instead of using averages to determine values, we do a number of replications. Okay, we keep doing it over and over again so we get a distribution. Okay, usually when we do capital budgeting, uh, we assume that we know what the cash flows are. Okay, so standard textbooks will tell you the cash flow in year one is this and the cash flow in year two is this and then you calculate net present value and internal rate of return. But in reality, cash flows can vary, which are going to cause NPV and IRR to vary. So just as a quick recap, some of you all of you should be familiar with the normal distribution, this bell-shaped curve, which is symmetric, and it has values such that, that um, a little more than 68% of the values lie plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. And not, a little over 95% lie plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean and um, almost 100%, 99.73% lie plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean. So even though we may have an average cash flow of 100,000, it can vary quite a bit depending on what its standard deviation is. So let's look at an example. Suppose we have a project that cost a million dollars and it has average annual cash flows of 250,000 per year with a standard deviation of 100,000. If the cost of capital is 15%, we'd like to evaluate this project. Now, I'll do this in a minute, but normally when we do it, we just use the 250,000 for the number of years the project lasts, and then we subtract out the cost, and then we figure out what NPV is and what IRR happen to be. But if the cash flows are normally distributed, you can see that 68% of the time you're going to have cash flows between 150 and 350. 95% of the time you're going to be between 50 and 450. And 99% of the time you're going to be between minus 50,000 and, fi uh, and positive 550,000. So you've got quite a variation here. So really what we'd like to do is deal with that risk. Now, if we just do the standard textbook version, we just assume all the cash flows are the same. So I put in the information here into Excel. Let me make this a little bigger for you. Um, so a million dollars is the cost, 250,000 of the cash flows. And I'm going to assume the project lasts for 10 years. And I've calculated NPV. And the way I've done that, the first argument happens to be the interest rate of the cost of capital, which is in C7. And then I have the cash flows, the positive cash flows from year one to year 10. You can't put in the cost. I've mentioned this in other videos I've done. When someone coded NPV into Excel, they did it incorrectly. They started discounting the first cash flow, which should be year zero's cost. So this is not correct if you put all of these numbers into um, the NPV function. So you just want to put in the positive cash flows or the cash flows starting from year one until the end of the project, and then you subtract out the cost. So if you do that, you get a little over 1.5 million. And IRR, there's an IRR function. This one, you simply put in equals IRR, and then you just highlight all of the cash flows, including the cost, and it does the calculation. You'll have to expand the number of decimal places. It always rounds off to a whole number. Okay. Now this is fine, but in reality, you're going to have some variation. Right? No business hits their mark of $250,000 a year in cash flows every single year. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. So let's see how we can deal with that using a Monte Carlo simulation. So I've got the same cost, the same cash flows, but I'm going to assume the standard deviation is 100,000. 
Let me make that a little bigger. Okay, 10 years and 15% is the uh, weighted average cost of capital. So what I want to do is I want these cash flows to be variable. I don't want them all to be the same every year, 250000 So how can I do that? I can use this function, norm INV, and this is going to return um, a value for the mean and the standard deviation if you put in a probability. What we're going to do is we're going to put in this function RAND open parenthesis, close parenthesis, so it's going to generate a random probability each time. Then I have to put in the mean, which is 250,000, and I have to put in the standard deviation, and what I'm also going to do here is I want to copy these down, so I'm going to put a dollar sign in for each. And I'm going to close that up, and I get a value. And actually, if I go to, if I'm in formulas and I hit calculate now, you'll notice it keeps change, it changes this. And I'm going to copy this down for these 10 periods. And you can see we have different cash flows in different periods. And again, as you know, you hit this calculate now, it recalculates, okay? Actually, anytime you hit, uh, well, not there, probably because I'm recording, but if you calculate now, it keeps changing these numbers. Let's calculate the NPV here. So equals NPV, and I'm going to put in the um, weighted average cost of capital first. Oh, wait a minute equals NPV, and I'm going to put in the rate, and then I'm going to put in the values here, from here to here, and then I have to put in, I'm going to close that, close that up, actually I don't need a comma, and I'm going to subtract out the cost. Since it's negative, I'm just going to add it in. See, 10. Okay, so here we get uh, a net present value of 288,987, which is more than the, uh, uh, actually is less than. We had 1.5 million before. You can see that the cash flows vary, right? Sometimes they're less than 250, sometimes they're quite a bit more. And so, and if I hit calculate now, we'll get different values. Here it's a negative. Here it's um, a larger positive number. It changes over and over again. All right, let me um, let me calculate IRR as well. Equals IRR. And again, I'm just going to highlight these values here. Close up the parenthesis, and we get 15.30%. All right. So you can see that this keeps changing these values. Let me highlight these so we can uh, easily see these. That every time I hit calculate now, it changes things. All right, let's see what happens. What we'd like to do is we'd like to do this replication a whole bunch of times. Every time I'm sort of hitting this calculate now, I'm doing a replication. But what we'd like to do is do it a hundred times, or let's say let's do it a thousand times, and then figure out what the average NPV and the average IRR happen to be. So I'm going to put in my first number for replication one, and I could just put a formula in and copy it down, but copying down a thousand numbers is, is sort of a nuisance. So you can hit this function here, right under the summation function, and you hit series. This is a column, and you're going to tell it to go from one to a thousand. Hit OK. And if I scroll all the way down, hopefully it gets to a thousand, and you can see it did. Okay, so we're going to do a thousand replications of this. Now, what we need to do is we need to put the values of this here and the value of this here. And then we're going to use a data table 
to do the calculations for us, do each replication. So here I'm going to put in this number. And here I'm going to put in this number. All right, so I've got this here. And I want to do, I want to create this Monte Carlo simulation where I simulate the whole thing. So I want to highlight all the cells down to 1,000. So if I hit Control, Shift, and Down Arrow key, it'll go all the way down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Data and What If Analysis here. And I want to do a data table. Now there's no row input cell and the column input cell you don't actually put in anything you just put in a blank cell the reason you have to do that is Excel needs a cell to do the calculations in so you just give it a blank cell you hit enter and hit OK and notice that it has created these numbers for us all over the place all right, so let me just reformat these, and I'm going to make these dollars, and I'm going to make these, again, control shift down arrow key, and I'm going to make these percentages, and I'm going to expand it to two decimal places. So you can see we have all these different, for each replication, we have a different NPV and a different IRR. And let me go down here. And we're going to calculate the mean and then um, some other descriptive statistics. So this goes down to uh, 1,010, and it starts at row 11, I believe. This is, this is row 11. So let's calculate the mean here. So equals mean, uh, uh, sorry, average, the term is average, and I want it to go from I 11 in fact I'm going to do this trick here I dollar sign 11 to I dollar sign 1010 I'm going to close it up and so that's what the mean is right now I'm just going to copy this down it's going to give us the mean values for everything but then it's a lot easier to redo the um, calculations here. So let me see if I can do this. Um, rather than having to type everything again, all I have to do is change average to median. So that's the middle value, right? The same number of values above and below. And let's figure out what the max and the min are. Maximum value, max. and the min. Okay, You can see there's a, a large negative NPV, which means the project is not any good. And I'm going to do the same thing here for this column. Let me see if I can copy this over. I may in fact be able to do that. Okay, It thinks it's a dollar sign. It's actually a percentage. And I think I can actually copy these all over, I hope and then just change these to percentages and here we have it so we have these average NPV and average IRR okay the median the mean the median the maximum and the minimum and again as you do different replications when you hit formulas and calculate now things change calculate now you can see how things are changing so you get a better idea of the risk that's involved that you could wind up with a project that loses you a lot of money you could have a project that makes you more than you expected and we can also see suppose we changed the standard deviation of the cash flows from a hundred thousand to let's say fifty thousand you're gonna find that things don't things don't fluctuate as much because you have a smaller standard deviation. Okay, These don't change as much. You don't have as big a negative value. 
you don't have as big a positive value either. Let's say there were only 25,000. Right, so you can see now with a small standard deviation it looks like just about every replication gives you an average actually even the worst case scenario the minimum seems to be above the cost of capital so it seems to be a good project okay as a positive NPV so it's quite easy to do the the Monte Carlo simulation in Excel by using the data table and uh, going to the what if and choosing table and setting it up and it gives you a much more realistic way of evaluating a project by allowing these cash flows to change over time.